podcast program. Welcome to Dreamland. This is a pre-recorded, previously broadcast program. In the human experience, not easily nor neatly put in a box. Things seen at the edge of vision, awakening a part of the mind as yet not mapped. And yet things every bit as real as the air we breathe but don't see. This is Dreamland. Good evening, everybody. It's Sunday evening. Welcome to another Dreamland. I'm Art Bell. And there's a bunch of news to catch you up on and a couple of programming notes. And we'll launch as usual with Linda Howe uh, this evening parked in Denver, Colorado. First, though, I would like to welcome to uh, the Dreamland group KTUCAM in Tucson, Arizona. KTUC, one of the regular affiliates on the uh, syndicated program, now joining Dreamland. Welcome, Tucson. And uh, the person who had most to do with that, I guess, Mike Gabrielson, who is the program director at KTUC. Good to be in Tucson now with uh, Dreamland. Also, WAIV-FM, the station manager there, Richard Parker in Peru, Illinois. So, Richard, thank you for getting us on in Peru, Illinois. Welcome to those two of its. Now, totaling 75 as uh, Dreamland continues to grow, uh, racing toward uh, uh, kind of a catch-up, I guess, in the number of affiliates with our regular syndicated program. Now, um, just, um, I guess, uh, moving away from our usual topic for just a moment, uh, for those of you that have not heard it, I would like to announce there has been an apparent agreement of some sort uh, with regard to uh, Haiti. Colin Powell, Jimmy Carter, and Sam Nunn, as you know, were in Haiti trying some last-minute bargaining with the military dictators there. This has apparently been successful, and an invasion which ha actually had already been ordered uh, with airplanes in the air and all the rest of it, averted at the last minute. U.S. troops will enter Haiti tomorrow at about noontime under the auspices of U.N. Resolution 940, 940, and hopefully uh, there will be a, uh, a peaceful entry into Haiti. Now, uh, that is problematic. The dictators have agreed to step down, but apparently uh, do not necessarily, though they may, leave Haiti. Uh, if there is to be violence in Haiti, uh, there may be violence at the announcement of the dictators giving up power. So all of this is news. We will continue to monitor. But there will not be an immediate invasion. There will rather be an orderly entry, they say, of U.S. troops into Haiti uh, later on uh, tomorrow, beginning at about noontime. Most of the national news will be covering that event. That would be noontime, I suppose, East Coast time. So that is the status of Haiti. We will not be going on uh, live at the 11 o'clock hour because of this, and we will be catching you up on it on the other syndicated program tomorrow. That is breaking news, and I wanted all of you to get it. Now, um, for Dreamland, uh, let us go all the way to Denver, Colorado, actually not as far as we usually go, to find Linda Howe, who's doing who knows what in Denver, but has a report for us. So, um, Linda Howe, good evening to you. Hi, Art. Hi. I'm glad to hear that a nonviolent solution uh, appears to be in the works for Haiti. That's, that is good news. So, so it would seem, Linda, yes. And I am in Colorado, where I spoke at the International Forum on New Science in Fort Collins this weekend. Subjects range from healing and free energy research to unexplained phenomena, including crop circles, animal mutilations, and the human abduction syndrome. Many people were talking about the question, what evidence is there that human abduction involves physical non-human entities from some unknown origin instead of mental hallucinations? And the fact is, and has been reported by several uh, human abduction uh, research in the last uh, two or three years, is that one out of four people in the abduction syndrome remember 
full conscious encounters with non-human beings. One such abductee is a Colorado woman that I interviewed today who has seen non-human creatures in her apartment. She desires to remain anonymous, but has agreed to share her experience with our Dreamland listeners, and I'd like to play an excerpt from that interview now. It was about 1993, it was in spring, March or April. Uh, I was getting ready to go to bed, turn out all the lights, except for one I always do in the foyer right by the entrance to my apartment. Uh, lay down, and from where my bed is, I can see into the living room and to the kind of light come through. And I was startled because right as I looked up, there was these three real short little beings. There was a door to my bedroom that was open. And these beings were so small, the top of their heads just went to like the door handle. About three feet. <laughs> At that, it looked like babies. And I'm thinking, my God, these look like little white babies. And I didn't see the, the eyes of the face. The minute I saw them, I couldn't move. You know, I can't, I've been by my bed and everything. I couldn't even reach, put my arm outside of the bed to grab it. I mean, I was just startled. If my mom had appeared in my bedroom, I still would have been startled that time of night. And I remember I couldn't move and I, was telling myself, you will remember, you will remember, and I was trying to, I was looking at their torso, and I was trying, like, okay, I cannot move, but I'm going to remember everything about you or whoever you are, and their skin was like onion skin. I mean, it's almost like if you see someone's fingerprint and you can see the lines in there, you could actually see the texture, and their skin seems so... Thin, but it reminded me like a fingerprint or onion skin, and it was so white. It was almost like there was a light inside them. They were so, it was so bright from the three, and that's all I remembered at all. They must have gotten close to you for you to see something like this pattern. Oh, they were coming! <laughs> they were coming straight towards me. When I saw them at the door, and I could see the height right there, and you just. They did not, they just kept coming, and when I was shocked, when I saw them, I tried to move to grab my gun, because I was startled, like, what is this, or who's in my room? And immediately, as I had visual contact, I immediately could not move. And that's why I told myself, okay, you've done something to me where I can't move, but it's kind of like trying to remember someone who's mugging you, trying to get a good description, <laughs> except I, I didn't look up and saw the eyes of the face, I only could concentrate on their torso because it was just a matter of seconds. But, yeah, they were coming so fast. And I remember the little, tiny, tiny, thin, long arms. Now, to listeners listening to this, they may think this is a scary story. But you're still here. Now, what would you say to the listeners now? You've had multiple encounters with something that you would consider to be non-human, right? Right, definitely. And it's happened since you were a child, mm -hmm. and you are still here. What is your sort of uh, residue now from a life of interaction with something we're all trying to understand that's not human? What do you feel that they want from you? I feel like I'm being studied by not one but several different groups. It's almost like, okay, what did this group do? Let's go see. And I feel like, uh, what well, times like a lab mouse with no say so, no clear answers. But some groups, it seems like they're more interested in human emotions, how people react to certain situations. Some it's physical and physical examination. Do you think that this is anything to be actually afraid of? I guess it's a human thing. Uh, it must be because spiritually I feel like I'm tied into God and things like that, but each time you're abducted, you don't get self-assured. It's not like, okay, I've been abducted several times, I'm coming back, I'm going to be okay. Each time they take you, 
you don't, you wonder if you're ever coming back. Because there's nothing in guarantee. They don't talk to you. They don't tell you it's okay. We're just taking you for this and this and we'll bring you back. It's the most isolated, loneliest feeling any person can experience because you're in an environment that is, is somewhere else that you can't do anything about. You don't know where you're at or how it works. You just know one minute you see something, they're taking you through the doors, taking you through the walls, through the windows. Uh, you feel relief when you return, but you're traumatized when you return. Usually within the same time. And not always. Not always. Um, it depends if you're looking at a clock or what, you know, if you can keep track of it. Now, in terms of people who are hearing about the abduction syndrome and conferences in which there are discussions with abductees and with researchers and investigators, if you were personally, from the basis of multiple interactions with this, whatever this non-human intelligence or non-human intelligences are, um, were to just speculate on how things might unfold in the future about whether we're going to have some kind of public interaction, what would you speculate? I think this is going to continue to increase. Yeah. Um, Leading up to? I think one day they will make themselves known. I think one day you're going to look outside and the sky is going to be filled with crap. And one of the values art of conferences like this is being able to talk with people uh, as this woman has uh, described the conscious encounter mm -hmm. and others are, feel that they can discuss uh, encounters like this with investigators uh, totally off the record and, and confidence. And then all of us are gaining, I think, more insights to the fact that uh, this is not simply a mental experience. There are too many people who are reporting absolutely concrete something uh, that they're interacting with, and that is part of, I think, why we all continue to try to monitor uh, the abduction syndrome, because if she's right, if someday the skies are going to be filled with discs, as many abductees have said, mm -hmm. um, the world better be a little more up to speed than it is now on uh, the fact that we're not alone in the universe. Well, it seems as though most uh, UFO investigators are now beginning to follow the abductions uh, as the best path to trying to figure out what's going on here. Right. And I uh, thought that she was uh, especially honest and uh, especially um, uh, summarizing in so many of the other uh, people's experiences that I've had uh, conversations with that so many people even anonymously, they still don't want to discuss anything in public. Sure. Linda, where will you be next week? Next weekend, I should be back in Philadelphia. Ah, back home finally. Right. All right, wonderful. Uh, well, thank you for the report. She was emotional. She did sound um, very straight to me, Linda. It was a good report. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, next week we'll go on to some other topics, and uh, I'm sure glad we're not going into some military situation in Haiti. Cross our fingers. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Art. Take care. Um, I don't know that uh, we're not going into called a situation. We are going into one, but uh, it is not going to be as, at least at the very uh, moment they hit the shores, as contentious as it might have been. So uh, we'll be examining this whole uh, uh, question of what's going on with Haiti over the next 24 hours, no doubt, talking about it on the syndicated program. In a moment, David Scott, I think you'll find him a fascinating guy, will be talking about life after death. Um, I think Mike Rigby is uh, David's uh, mentor and uh, helped bring him here, and I think you're going to enjoy it, and we'll get to uh, David Scott in just a moment. I want all of you to listen to me very closely. If you've got any savings, money kicking around, extra money, a sense of humor and perspective are what is needed to get through this life, according to David. He's a musician, songwriter, author, philosopher, student of quantum physics, and seeker after spiritual truth. All these things and more are parts that make David who and what he is, a human being like any other, trying to get through life and make some sense out of it all besides. Author of the soon-to-be-released book, Way of the Ultimate Warrior, 
David stresses the importance of creating a solid spiritual foundation in one's life as a way to battle many obstacles and challenges that one faces as they sojourn upon the earth. Understanding the varying degrees of spirituality and beliefs of others, David focuses on principles that will surely assist anyone desiring to create their own heaven on earth while all around them there is chaos. David has studied all his adult life the many and varied re religious beliefs of the world in his search for the truth. He has learned there is a common link between all of them, the reality of the spirit of man. He has learned, too, that spirituality and science are now beginning to merge together in quantum physics. His studies in the field have confirmed his belief the universe is not an accident, that there is an intelligent design behind it, his studies at Brigham Young University were heavy on music, philosophy, and religion. Not content with the rigid environment found within a university setting, David set off on his own to explore this life, to discover the truth to be found in it. He was not disappointed in his search. He said, quote, I haven't found or learned all there is to know and uh, learned uh, the... Um, uh, uh, and learn, <laughs> and learn concerning the spirit and its relationship to eternity. But I have learned for sure that we continue to live after this life, and that this life really isn't what it appears to be. There is definitely something going on bigger than we can possibly imagine. Because of David's understanding regarding the spiritual nature of life, Mike Rigby, publisher of the popular book Life in the Unseen World, and a guest here, asked that he share the story behind his newest release, Heaven, uh, Heavenly Ways of Earth's Graduates, the true story of three allied soldiers killed in World War I who were actually permitted to return and report their experiences and share their insights. Wow. As to most uh, uh, of those living still on Earth, he says it's an exciting opportunity. I'm sure it is. There's a lot to find out about a man named David Scott, so let's go find it out, shall we? David, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, Art. I'm happy to be here. That's, um, that's, that's quite an introduction. Uh, I'm glad you sent that to me. Um, I, I was kind of curious about what approach you were going to take, uh, uh, David. You are convinced, are you not, there is a life that follows this one, some sort of consciousness? Oh, yes, there's, uh, there's most certainly a, a life after this existence here on Earth, most certainly. Well, um, I know that you concur with others that I have interviewed that the life after this one uh, will occur in, in, in spiritual planes. Is that uh, correct? Yes, uh, it is correct. See, what happens, Art, is that we come to this Earth to learn as much as we can. Uh, pretty much to understand uh, how to live by faith, how to uh, create, how to use our thought and everything like that. Depending on what we do in this life will determine the quality of life that we have after we hmm. leave this life. Interesting. David, did you see a movie called uh, Defending Your Life? Isn't <laughs> that a wonderful movie? A wonderful movie. Uh, is it anything like that, do you suppose? Well, Defending Your Life... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Albert Brooks was great in that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, that movie, uh, Albert Brooks is killed, and he is brought to uh, Judgment City, and uh, he is forced to sit there in uh, what he felt was uh, a judgment session, reviewing areas of his life. And um, in that movie, he was uh, seeing something like uh, nine or ten hours of his life, uh, or days of his life, where... They determine the amount of fear that he just demonstrated throughout his life. That's right. And uh, in the course of the of the movie, uh, certain principles came out that uh, much much in your life uh, has to do with how you relate to fear, how you react to certain situations, and what you do to overcome that fear. And that, in a, in a certain way, is true. Um, in other ways. Uh, 
uh, there are other things in there that are purely theatrical. Of course. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, you could almost describe where he was in that movie as a spiritual plane or Absolutely. a middle ground of some kind. And is that what you feature we will go to? Well, we go to, uh, it all depends, Art. Uh, when, you, when you die, uh, you'll, uh, for instance, uh, I guess everyone's now familiar with Betty Eady's book, uh, uh, Embraced by the Light. Absolutely. And she uh, uh, experienced the, uh, the opportunity to go to a plane of existence that is far higher than what others have described in their experiences. She says she actually met Christ and uh, was permitted to tour around the universe, so to speak, and see mm -hmm. all the creations of God. And um, in, that, in that setting there, she was able to, as she called it, a life review. Where she not, and this is the interesting thing that I thought was fascinating, because it's just not her that was relating this uh, story about the life review with many others, where she said that not only does she have the opportunity to see her life, but she had the opportunity to view it from the perspective of the individual that she was relating with at the time. For instance, if you hurt someone's feelings, not only were you able to see you hurting that person's feelings, but you were also able to feel how that person felt when their so, feelings were hurt. So uh, we will be exposed to ourselves. Uh, that is, it's going to be some sort of uh, mirror of review of what we have done. We're going to see, we're going to, it's going to be called to our attention everything we've ever thought, said, everything we've ever thought, everything we ever did in life. There are no secrets hidden. Wow. All right, David, we're at the bottom of the hour, so rest for a moment. We'll come back and uh, get much deeper into this. Okay. All right, David uh, Scott is my guest from, I believe, uh, probably, well, I guess uh, up in the Salt Lake City area. And we're talking about life after death, what it's going to be like. What's up there? What we can expect? You're hearing Greenland with Art Bell. To participate in the program, call toll-free 1-800-618-8255. 1-800-618-8255. First-time callers, area code 702-727-1222. Or the wildcard line at 702-727-1295. This is the CBC Radio Network. It certainly is. Hi, everybody. I'm Art Bell. Uh, engrossed right up until uh, program time here. It was a little confusing uh, with the situation going on in Haiti. But again, there is a tentative, uh, perhaps tentative is the wrong word to use, an agreement uh, with regard to what's going on in Haiti. Back now to David Scott. And uh, David, I would say that life after death or the possibility of it has been an abiding uh, deep interest of mine. It's one of the things that provoked this program. And I would ask you how you know. Uh, you, you apparently know, so how do you know? What proof would you cite, the best proof that exists that there is life after death, that there are these planes of existence that we do come back again? Well, you know, aside from the fact of the many accounts, uh, for instance, Dr. Raymond Moody's uh, 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 in-depth uh, studies in his book, Life After Life, and More Life After Life, and uh, other credible uh, people such as uh, Dr. George Ritchie, who uh, in his book, Return From Tomorrow, uh, my own personal experiences, not that I, I have to say that at the beginning, I myself have never had a near-death experience, but I've had many experiences dealing with the spirit, mm -hmm. um, personal experiences of, of the nature of, uh, you can't deny them. And um, from, as for myself, I know that there is a life after death, that there is something far more greater waiting for the human being 
than people can ever possibly imagine in their uh, in their uh, hearts or mind. In the movie we mentioned a little while ago, uh, one of the questions he asked was, "Is there a hell?" And uh, the answer was, "No, not really, but L.A. is getting pretty close." That's the thing. <laughs> and I and so I would ask you very much the same sort of question: Is there, uh, in your view, a hell? Well, you know, there, as you're probably well aware, there are millions of people throughout the world who believe that there is. And that they believe that if you uh, don't do certain things in this life, you won't go to heaven, but you'll go to hell. Now, I personally believe, uh, after countless uh, uh, years of, uh, and hours of study on the subject, yes, there is a hell, but let me explain that. There are different spheres of existence in the in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. uh, many people have said that uh, who have gone there and seen them uh, suggest that there are seven spheres of existence. Uh, there are three below and four up uh, higher, and uh, the lower spheres or the darker realms constitute what is uh, hell. Now I just finished uh, reading a book. Um, called Wanderer in Spirit Lands. It's uh, uh, briefly it's a, an account of an individual from Italy who uh, died and was permitted to return, and he had a hell experience. Yes, they're not very widely publicized, uh, David, but I was going to bring that up. There are a number of people who have had NDEs and claim quietly, uh, as you can imagine they would, they went instead to a hell. Yes. Uh, I just completed a book that a friend of mine uh, suggested to me. It, it's called To Hell and Back by uh, a man uh, who, <laughs> who actually died and went to hell called Maurice, uh, Dr. Maurice S. Rawlings. <laughs> in, in his book, I wouldn't r really highly recommend it because it, 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 it doesn't go into the depth that you would think it would. It has an agenda to it, and the, his agenda in the book is to literally scare, scare the hell out of you. Uh, but he described several instances in where people died, and instead of waking up in a brilliant uh, paradise pasture, they were in hell. And oh they, their experience so terrified them that they wouldn't talk about it. Uh, they, when they got back in their bodies, or oh, there was one instance in there where on the operating table the guy was resuscitated, and he begged the doctors, don't let me die. Don't let me die. I am in hell. And, uh, you know, that sort of experience lets you understand that what we do here is so much the more important. Well, it does put that slant on it, yes. Um, what uh, What is the best description you've heard of what hell may be? I mean, surely people have told us, have they not? Well, uh, from what I've been able to gather was that hell is a very dark land and there's just as there are several levels of uh, the upper realms there are several levels of the darker realms darker realms mm. and uh, the book I, I uh, just mentioned wander in spirit lands he describes uh, having gone to the darker realms but there were still realms below him and he said that there was literally a ring of fire around the lowest realm fire uh-huh uh, now, now, this isn't the, uh, the traditional lake of fire and brimstone he's referring to. It's a barrier where ones from higher realms can pass through to it, but mm -hmm. those on the other side of it can't pass beyond that barrier. All right. Uh, where do spirits fit into this? And by that I mean spirits, uh, for example, I've got some photographs, uh, David, mm -hmm. of what I believe to be ghosts. Right. Now, where do ghosts fit in? Are ghosts people uh, that simply have not gone to any uh, spirit realm at all and are somehow trapped here, or is in fact this earth a spirit realm? Yes, uh, that's, that's very true. This, uh, this earth itself is uh, uh, a spirit realm. You see, uh, as it's described, uh, if you remember when Mike was on your radio show, he talked about uh, life in the world and scene where uh, Hugh Benson described that in concentric circles around the earth are realms of uh, uh, spirituality. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that the ones closest to the earth were the darker realms. People who have seen ghosts, yes, I believe that there are spirits trapped here on earth, and what traps them here is their 
unwillingness to give up the temporal uh, cravings, the appetites that we are all um, endowed with, that they are still attached to the things of this earth. Okay, well, that implies uh, some kind of choice. Yes. And um, a lot of uh, ghost stories and spirit stories seem connected to people who die violently mm -hmm. or people uh, who die at a, a very bad moment and have uh, unrequited love or, or some tremendously uh, emotionally important thing that was going on when they died. Right. And this is very true. Many people who do die of a violent nature, let's say they were murdered, mm -hmm. uh, they're so full of rage that, the, that someone would actually take their life that their entire being is filled with revenge. And they will do whatever, and it, it, let me say here, Art, it's very possible for a spirit to interfere with your life. Uh, uh, a, a spirit from the darker realms is quite capable of interfering with your life. Without your ongoing knowledge that that is occurring, I mean, you're just sitting there saying, God, I've really had some bad luck here in life. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's very possible. Now, you see, again, though, I have to say here, that if you are being, uh, challenged by a spirit from a dark realm it's because of your choices that you've made uh, if you're so focused on spiritual matters and if you pursue a spiritual path you're protected from these things yourself by your own uh, will you see mm -hmm. and uh, but most people they, they seem to live their lives in such a way as to negate any possibility of a hereafter or a life after death or any consequences thereafter or any blessings thereafter. And uh, we merrily go along with the flow. David, uh, let me ask you about the nature of the soul, since it is apparently the thing that uh, uh, traverses uh, from one existence to another, I guess. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, there were some very uh, early studies that I just can't shake from my mind, David, mm -hmm. regarding people who died right. and um, were actually measured with regard to weight mm -hmm. and um, actually uh, were measured to have uh, had their w weight change at the, at the very moment of, uh, of death. Right. And there was no other explanation anybody could give other than, you know, that it was the soul. Yes. Uh, the spirit, yeah, people have, uh, it, it's essential to understand that spirit is matter. It's a refined form of matter, but matter nonetheless. Is it's, matter in the sense it is energy? Well, it, energy is matter, matter is energy. Is energy. Mm -hmm. you know? yes. But the thing is, is that the soul, the spirit, is actually uh, a refined, uh, it's refined matter, and it vibrates at a higher frequency than your physical body. If you consider everything around you is one huge vibration, everything in the universe vibrates at some sort of uh, level. And as I've uh, discovered and as uh, uh, are related in uh, Life in the World Unseen and Heavenly Ways of Earth's graduates, they, they uh, talk a great deal about the vibrational level of an individual. And so, yes, when a spirit leaves the body, you're actually losing matter from the body so yes I would say it could be measured that's that's remarkable hold that thought David I'll come right back to you that's one eight back now to David Scott and we were discussing the nature of the soul and you're saying it is matter in effect and it vibrates oh yeah at, wh at what frequency David? <laughs> <laughs> if I knew that <laughs> I wouldn't be talking to you right now well there you are I was going to say like uh, like uh, Dan Rather uh, people are going to be stopping you on the street saying what's the frequency <laughs> 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 this so, is true so we, we don't really know but you believe that at some uh, level it, it vibrates at a frequency well you see what happens is is that when you come here to earth you come here with a certain agenda uh, to it's personal for each individual who's ever lived, who ha is living out, who will live uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. You come here with a certain agenda, and that agenda uh, primarily is to uh, create your own spirituality, to uh, to progress spiritually. And as you progress spiritually, mm -hmm. you raise your vibrational level just a little bit, and just a little bit more, and just a little bit more. And then eventually, you're going to be able to see around you 
the spirits that are tied to this earth, or even be able to uh, receive direct communication from your uh, spiritual uh, servers or your Heavenly Father, and you're going to be a clear conduit in that regard. Yes, everything vibrates that way. Huh. So it is possible then, uh, as, as you uh, progress, mm -hmm. to actually talk to the, the spirits that have gone before. Oh, yes, yes. Um, there are countless instances of that uh, ever since uh, recorded history. Uh, of course, many people put it down as myth. Well, they sure do. Uh, one, one way it's done, it is said, is with Ouija. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is, I, 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 I do believe that the Ouija board uh, can receive communication from spirits, but you got to understand what spirits are you talking with. Well, I don't know if it's a Ouija board or just the fact that people are sitting down and actually trying to communicate with spirits. Right. And and so uh, you think they do? Well, through, maybe it all depends. Uh, is it through the course of their own will? Are they moving that little triangle around the board? Or is it to such a degree that uh, a spirit is actually communicating through you? I can tell you this. My own personal belief is that anybody communicating through a Ouija board isn't someone that you would want to listen to anyway. Mm. A lot of people say that such an attempt to communicate is inherently dangerous, that you might call up things you might not be so happy about. Do you agree with that? It's very possible. Um, part of the things that you need to understand is that the uh, spirits that live nearer the earth in the darker realms are constantly roaming the earth, roaming around in their own misery, and they want everyone else to be miserable, and they will uh, attempt to influence you to, um, you know, think in a certain way. Well, I would think then that somebody sitting down and playing about with a Ouija board would be in just inviting these spirits who are kind of looking for trouble anyway. <laughs> well, I would think so too, yes. Yeah. You know, to come in and cause trouble. Mm -hmm. So uh, you would say to anybody considering playing in such areas, don't, don't do, it. do it. Yeah, don't uh -huh. do it. You see, the thing is, you got to remember that if a spirit is tied to this earth, his vibrational rate is uh, just a little bit higher than yours, and which means it's easier to bridge the gap. Uh, when you're trying to communicate or when you're trying to receive revelation from a higher source, mm -hmm. their uh, vibrational rate or their spiritual plane is so much higher that they have to lower their vibrational rate to talk to you. It's a lot more difficult, specifically when you're... Uh, kind of caught up in the everyday goings on of life. You don't listen. All right. Well, what you're telling us about what happens after we die, David, uh -huh. is markedly different than is described, uh, or most people would say, is described in the Bible. How do you reconcile these differences? Well, you know, I, I truly believe the Bible to be an inspired work of our Father in Heaven. There's no question about it. But think about this for a moment. The Bible is only a couple of thousand pages long, and much has been written after the fact, and much has been left out, and there has been much taken out, for instance, the Apocrypha. And so there's much spiritual truth that is out there that isn't dealing with the Bible, uh, which isn't dealt with in the Bible. Now, see, now also, too, <clears throat> the Bible was specifically written for one purpose and that was to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. You see. And the, the Bible is specifically designed to put people on this path, this path of spirituality and to find the truth themselves. Anything I'm telling you, Art, you can find out for yourself. There's nothing I'm saying that you can't find, go out and find out for yourself. Would you describe um, what your what you believe uh, and the avenues you pr pursue as kind of a, a new wavy sort of thing. Uh, a new age type new, of thing. New age, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, geez, I have a real problem with that. Uh, yes, new age uh, philosophy and new age thought is truly uh, the popular thing now. And specifically, it's popular for people who want to justify, oh, I'm trying to say this in a nice way, trying to justify their current lifestyle. Uh, instead of calling on their Heavenly Father, they, yes. they call on the universal intelligence. And instead of uh, 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 following after uh, one perfect man, they say, you know, you create your own reality and everyone, you know, there, there are great teachers throughout the world, Buddha, um, 
Gandhi, you know, all these things. So It's uh, interesting, then. You accept some New Age philosophy, but um, you don't embrace it to, to the exclusion of m more traditional beliefs. Uh, oh, you you mix them together, sort of. Well, see, the thing is, is that uh, New Age philosophy, there is some truth in New Age philosophy. There's no question about it. Uh, there is a life after death. There is spiritual uh, planes of existence uh, uh, of all those uh, avenues. There are people on this earth that can communicate with spirit who, who have passed on. And there's active communication going on between the spirit world and people. There's thousands, if not millions, of people throughout the world who have had some spiritual experience with someone from beyond uh, our current existence. I, I'll tell you what I believe right now, so there's absolutely no confusion in the minds of anyone. The God is the God of, God of the Bible. That's right, and Jesus is the Christ, the only okay. way to the Father. All right. Um, well, then, back to the mechanics, because that's what I find absolutely fascinating, these different uh, spiritual planes. Is there any way that a person can know what spiritual plane... Uh, they are destined for, uh, or anything about their next life, or for that matter, their past lives, before they die? Well, um, yes, yes, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yes, you can know what you can expect when you die, and you can know at this very instant. What are your thoughts right now? What's your true desire in your heart this very moment? And if you know what that is, then you pretty much have a good idea of what kind of plane of existence you can experience if you were to die at this moment. Well, I don't know, David. Um, if I do that, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I've done things in my life that I'm not uh, uh, proud of, that I worry may be held against me in some judgment city-like place uh, uh -huh. if I'm forced to even review all of my own actions. Uh -huh. I'm not so sure. Did you know, you I, ha I have my doubts. I've been okay, but then again, maybe I haven't. Well, did you learn from your experiences? Did they make you a better person? That's the question that needs to be asked. Also, too, and this is something that I find absolutely astonishing to me, uh, people seem to think that Father is sitting up there with a baseball bat, <laughs> just waiting for Art to screw up one time, <laughs> and he's going to bop you one, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, and they, they, live, they worship Father not because... They love him, but because they fear what's going to happen if they don't. Mm. And the thing is here is that everything that happens in this life, every minor detail, is for your own benefit. It's, you see, Father doesn't see the sin. He sees what the benefit of the sin is going to create. You see, he also sees that there is going to be an opportunity for you to grow from it. Everything is good in the sense that you're going to learn from it eventually and progress higher. You, when you put your hand on a hot stove... That was a bonehead thing to do, but you're never going to do it again. Well, uh, right. Uh, but you say this on the one hand, but on the other hand, you say, well, there are planes that equate to hell. Right. So it's as though on, on the one hand there's forgiveness, but, uh, but maybe there isn't. I mean, maybe in, in a sense, uh, if you've not been good, mm -hmm. uh, you're headed to a lower plane. But what if I told you Father had absolutely nothing to do with that choice? Well, then I'd, I'd wonder, uh, I'd wonder, wonder, David. I really would, because uh, I would think that that would be the realm of, you know, the person that does see over those things. Mm -hmm. he, he, see, the, the wonderful thing is, is that he's given us free choice. He's given us the right to choose whatever it is we want to do with our lives here. If we choose to do, oh, unwise things, if we choose to be a mass murderer, Mm. or to live in a unmoral, immoral way of life, we essentially will become such a person that will only feel comfortable and only be able to exist in a certain realm. On the other hand, if we live our life in forgiveness and we continually strive to serve and we continually seek to know the truth, then that we're going to be in an entirely different existence, solely based on what we uh, what the desires of our heart is. Well, there are a lot of people who would say that what you're doing, the areas you're investigating, uh, you should not be investigating. The things you're looking into, you should not be looking into. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've gotten that a lot. I'm sure you have. <laughs> Specific, specifically around where I live. So how do you answer that? Ah, it's my choice. I want to know the truth. 
I'm unwilling to accept any man's word for anything. I, too, am a big believer in the pursuit of truth, and so we go ahead, David, perhaps at our own peril. Who knows? Uh, stay right where you are. We're at the top of the hour, and we'll be back. David Scott is my guest, and we're exploring the unknown. We'll be back. That that's uh, uh, even a remote possibility. All right. Uh, one, you have to recognize that uh, when one gets started searching for something, uh, you run into, all, for example, uh, mountain ranges. I searched for 35 years, and I went to geologists, I went to all kinds of people to get some kind of an indication of what caused mountain ranges. God caused mountain ranges. That's the answer you got? Yeah. Okay? Okay. No. Fine. Okay, then who is God? All right? If you want to go that route, that's wonderful. The uh, unfortunate thing about that type of thing is there's a long history in our uh, past where misinformation has become bad. And that's what I've become concerned about. All right. Well, I'm a big boy. I can face up to facts the way they they really are. And uh, well, you, you, you you tell me. I mean, you you don't believe in the Big Bang. You was in in essence tell me that everything always has and always will be uh, here, and the only constant is change. Um, that's a very difficult uh, concept for most people, me included. Always has been and always will be. Okay. Uh, let's let's take one more step into uh, into what what we mean by there's no uh, by change. All right. All right. We know for a fact now the Hubble from the kingdom of nine. We continue with your calls on Greenland with Art Bell. 1-800-618-8255. 1-800-618-TALK. First-time callers, area code 702-727-1222. 702-727-1222. Or the wildcard line at area code 702-727-1295. 727-1295 in the 702 area code. Now again, here's Art Bell. From Provo, Utah, my guest is David H. Scott, and he's here talking about uh, The World Unseen, I guess. Uh, it's another book title, but uh, indeed it is The World Unseen, but I guess you can know about it, and we're talking about it, and we'll talk more about it with David in just a moment. First, 800. We're going back now to our guest, David Scott, and I think, uh, David, you will be interested in this fact that just arrived for the two of us. A statement for you and Mr. Scott. This comes from uh, Eric in San Francisco. My mother recently passed away with cancer, and she was uh, definitely conscious right up until the last minute, was not on any medications, and she kept saying, quote, they're trying to get me to come across the ridge. And she would say, quote, but I'm not ready yet, end quote. She left this world so peacefully with a smile on her face that I definitely believe she saw something much better beyond our plane of reality. Uh, what do you think of that one, David? Well, you know, that is, that, that is something that happens quite often. Uh, let me tell you a, a short story of what happened to me last year. My very closest friend I have ever had on Earth uh, passed away last year. Sorry. Uh, he, you know, was the epitome of a Greek god, you know, the picture of hell. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he graduated BYU in exercise physiology, had the body to prove it, you know, all that stuff. Sure. Well, he was diagnosed not only with uh, one form of cancer, uh, renal carcinoma, but when they did the MRI, they discovered that it spread to his lymph system and his uh, bones. Oh, boy. And uh, he lingered on for uh, about seven months after the diagnosis. Well, towards the end, I was sitting in his room, and 
uh, I was holding his hand, and his father was in the room uh, with us. And, <clears throat> and he opened his eyes and looked up in the corner of the room. He says, Dad, they're here. They're here? Yeah, Dad, they're here. And his uh, dad would say, who's here, Roger? Who's there? And all Roger would say is, they're there. They're, they're here now. And, uh, and he closed his eyes and went back to sleep. And uh, shortly thereafter, uh, he died. So, yes, I do know that, see, as one becomes closer to dissolution or to death, the, the thinner the veil becomes. And the more that you're going to be able to, you see, your, your spirit is partly here and it's partly there. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, it's just going to uh, just float out of the body and be taken on to wherever it goes after it's died or after death. Let's explore for a second near-death experiences, because, <laughs> um, which I guess we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but there was a, uh, a show on that I can't shake from my mind, and I, now I can't even recall what program it was. It may have been 60 Minutes or, you know, 2020 or a program like that. Uh -huh. And they interviewed a doctor mm -hmm. uh, who had for years been getting near-death experiences uh, in the operating room. Right. I don't know whether you saw this program or not, but... but, but the, the, the Angels program with Patty Duke? Um, no, I don't know. At any rate, this doctor took a neon sign and put it up above the operating uh, room right. uh, on a high cabinet where nobody could see it except somebody who would actually literally float up to the ceiling, as so many people have said they do. And I forget, the neon sign could be programmed to say different things, mm -hmm. and it said something stupid like uh, when the popsicles bloom in August or something or another, I can't remember what it was, but something that only somebody who had been up to the ceiling in the operating room would be able to see. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever come back able to describe what's, what that sign says. Mm -hmm. I, I saw the program that you're referring to. Good. I have no answer for you. Uh, on the one hand, you could say, well, maybe nothing happened. Maybe they didn't flow out of the bodies. On the other hand, maybe they did flow out of their bodies and uh, came back and uh, it was such an interesting experience to them or such a scary experience to them they didn't want to say anything to anybody. Uh, well, maybe. The other, the other thing that was uh, very important, I thought, in that program was a doctor who said, look, what these people see when they die is uh, is to be expected. Uh, if you look at the way the brain dies, it dies from the outside moving inward. Mm -hmm. They see a bright light that gets uh, brighter. That would be expected as, as the neurons uh, in the brain uh, uh, stop firing and they continue firing inside uh, mm -hmm. the bright center, the bright light and all the rest of it. It's a normal physical reaction. Right, and uh, that's what some doctors say. Then on the other hand, in that same program, they interviewed doctors of the same field, psychiatrists, who have died themselves, who have experienced uh, that uh, near-death experience and refute that. They said that was the most real experience they've ever had in their entire life. It is true. It could have been a, a hallucination of a dying brain. So we're back to square one. Uh, on the one hand, you have people saying, well, yes, this is a true event. On the other hand, you have physicians, doctors, people in society we highly respect saying, well, this is a hallucination of the brain. That's right. And, uh, and so I guess it boils all down to if, it has, if it, happens, it has to happen to you for you to really know for sure or you live your life by faith. Hmm. I choose to live my life by faith. Yes, uh, but I choose, and I, I, you apparently do as well, to try to pursue the truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder, what do you think will be the best avenue, David, to try to prove, though we may never be able to, that there is an existence beyond this one, if you were to choose a single avenue or even multiple avenues of um, research to mm -hmm. try to decide for sure whether or not it's true, how would you pursue it? Well, as I have pursued it, which is empirical, uh, relating everything to myself, uh, of course you have, to, you have to gather evidence from other people's experience, but then you have to compare it with what your experience has been in life. Uh, if you choose to live your life in such a way as to be open to the possibility that there is a spiritual um, level of mankind, mm -hmm. evidence will be presented to you throughout your lifetime that you are a spiritual being. On the other hand, if you don't believe those things, 
uh, you're not going to find evidence for it. Sort of like uh, when a physicist tries to do, determine whether light, whether or not light is uh, a wave or a particle. They have experiments that show that light is both a wave and a particle. But now what they're discovering is, is that what you're, when you go into the experiment, you'll find precisely what it is that you're looking for. So one scientist who th feels it's a wave will prove that it's a wave. Mm -hmm. And then one scientist who thinks it's a particle will prove that it's a particle. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a matter of what you are going into with your personal prejudices or your personal bias. That's the best I can do. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's go to the telephone, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, David, and let's begin to take some questions. This is, uh, if anything, certainly a fascinating, uh, absolutely a fascinating topic. So are you up for that? I'm ready. All right, David, here it comes. On the toll-free line, good evening. You're on the air with David Scott. Hello there. Hi. Hi. You're, hi on, you're on the air, sir. Turn yeah. your radio off. Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just tuned in from San Francisco. Yes, sir. I caught a little bit of the show before, uh, just making sure you're talking about uh, spiritual things, basically. Yes, we are. Right. Um, I, uh, I've, I've been a Christian for seven years, and uh, I found that uh, Jesus is the only one who claimed I am the truth. And he said, I am the way and the truth. And uh, I heard a message today uh which uh, was very interesting. Um, <clears throat> the pastor spoke about um, about how uh, Satan, the, the god of this age, has blinded the eyes of unbelievers. And he said that in Scripture, he took a third, uh, according to Scripture, he took a third of the demons with him, and and that also that a third of Jesus' ministry was dealing with with the demonic realm. And so there. The demonic realm is a very much reality, and there, it's a Bible says there's powers and principalities which uh, influence which influence our lives. All right, uh, let's address that. Uh, the demonic realm, the devil. Mm -hmm. um, there is, in essence, a kind of hell. You said, is right. this uh, a domain? Yes, it is actually. Uh, the the domain of the dark realms uh, are presided over by. Uh, spirits who possess uh, great uh, forces of will or thought and able to subject lesser uh, beings to their to their will. Hmm. The the information that was just uh, provided to us uh, concerning the host of heaven, the third of the host of heaven, these beings that were cast out of heaven were at one time angels of light, and they chose to rebel against our Father in heaven and His. Uh, a plan of salvation, and they were cast down to the earth, where they will remain to this day, uh, will remain to the end of the uh, time. That would imply that uh, after death, David, uh, free will or some form of free will uh, in the spirit realm continues? Yes, absolutely. See, we will never, ever uh, be denied our free will or our free choice. That is one of the absolute truths that our Father in Heaven has laid down. Even after Christ returns to the earth again um, and cleanses the earth and all that stuff, uh, men and women will still have a choice as to whether or not to choose to follow after Christ or choose to follow after their own path. Uh, people will always have an opportunity to choose wherever they're at. All right, uh, on the first-time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Yes, sir, I just have one question. I'm calling from Fairbanks, Alaska. Fairbanks, Alaska, all right. And I I sort of believe the way he does, but I have a question that's bothered me for eons that I need to answer to, and that is, if this is true about we have after life and that we come here to learn, how is it that today there is more people... A lot on Earth than there was 500 years ago. All right, that, that's a very good question. Thank you. It's one everybody asks, and I should have asked it myself. Uh, the population mm -hmm. continues to grow, David. The forecasts are that shortly after the uh, the turn of the century, uh, the Earth's population will double. Right. How can this be? Well, uh, you have to understand, Father has a lot of children. Uh, there's a lot of people still waiting to come down to this earth for their immortal probation and their time here to grow. 
it will uh, be thus even more so as the time draws nearer to the, uh, the second coming of Christ. Well, are these, in essence, fresh souls? I don't know if that's the right term or not. But well, uh, are you referring to reincarnation? Uh, there's a lot of debate to that. Well, in effect, you have been referring to reincarnation, or if 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 not uh, by that name, then then a rose that, that smells just like it. Uh, you have been talking about uh, a coming back and uh, mm -hmm. uh, proceeding with one's spiritual life and becoming more perfect, and that is in fact reincarnation, is it not? Well, I, I guess from one perspective it is. Uh, my definition of reincarnation is where a spirit has lived a life on this earth before, mm -hmm. who has died before, and who has been uh, uh, brought back in a rebirth in another body on this earth. Re uh, reincarnation seems that, sounds like it to me. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it sounds like to me too. Uh, as far as reincarnation is concerned, now there. <laughs> well, I want I want to circle back to the Fairbanks man's uh, uh, a question. In other words. If that is the ensuing process, and you seem to confirm that it is, then are these, in essence, fresh souls, souls that have not been on the earth plane previously? Well, you know, I, 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 I hesitate to answer that question specifically, but I'll, I'll attempt to do so in a way to satisfy the cult's interest. I have a personal belief that we have opportunities to continue to, 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 continue to experience life. Uh, to the degree where we have accomplished what we came here for. The books that I've mentioned, um, Life in the World Unseen, uh, Heavenly Ways of Earth's Graduates, mm -hmm. they both say that uh, reincarnation is, in fact, a, a legitimate uh, way of growth, mm -hmm. that we do have multiple opportunities to come back here, uh, but it's through the grace of God to determine whether or not that spirit will have the opportunity to do so. For instance, if they were deprived of their full existence here in, in a murder or a bad accident or whatever. All right. Okay, well, that, that says we come back. It doesn't address the question of the uh, b b ballooning population. In other words, are these new souls? Are these souls that have been elsewhere, uh, been on standby, been in other lives, other civilizations prior to this one? Where are they all coming from is the question. Well, there, we all have existed before we even came to this earth, long before this earth was even created. Uh, we have existed with our Heavenly Father in His kingdom long before this earth was created. So, yes, there are souls still waiting to come to this earth. Some have been reserved to come to this earth in this day and time because they are such powerful uh, spirits and that they will be used to guide others to the truth. <laughs> All right, on the wild card line, you're on the air uh, with David Scott. Good evening. Uh, how you doing? Um, <clears throat> maybe I got through in some ways, but then again, it didn't. Um, my name is Michael, and uh, I'm calling because uh, I could be Jesus Christ reincarnated, but I'm not putting the world on my shoulders, people. It's your responsibility. Um, basically, anything you want to ask, uh, the guy put it very, very good to you, you know, on your show, it, that was excellent, A1 plus for that, but uh, through, through God, okay, and, and the understanding of Jesus Christ and, and you know, his beliefs, um, everlasting life, you can go anywhere in the universe you want. Uh, do, do you have a specific question, sir? Um, basically, I, I don't have any kind of question, but uh, you're a talker tonight is right in there. All right, glad you're enjoying it. His name is David Scott. On the first-time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi, Art. Hello, where are you? I'm in San Diego. Okay. Uh, my name's Scott. Hi, Scott. And oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the fellow's name. David Scott. David Scott, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, David, uh, the question you just, you just got posed to you? Yes, Scott. I, I, I think... Uh, when I think about that, I think that perhaps we have concurrent, you know, because if it keeps going like it is, there'll just be unlimited number of souls on the planet. I think there's concurrent lives here. Well, one right after the other. Uh -huh. No, no, he said concurrent. Concurrent. Like when I meet somebody, like it could be a male, it could be a female, it could be another race. Uh -huh. We have a lot in common. People might, I think people get married to each other like that, and they don't even know the fact that they're having uh, the same soul in different bodies. Right. 
Uh, does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does make sense. I'm not um, convinced that that's that's a true uh, uh, doctrine. Yeah. Um, and then again, though, let me let me say this: I don't know everything there is to know. Uh-uh. Uh, there's, uh, I know a little bit of the truth, but there is a whole mess of truth out there to learn. Yeah. And anyone who says with finality that uh, one thing or another is true or not true. Um, well, then you know they're wrong since they say that. <laughs> well, they, they 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 demonstrate a great deal of arrogance yes, in sir. thinking that there is uh, that they know everything. The mm-hmm. father I, I has uh, a whole mess of mysteries out there for for people to to learn and understand, and this is one of them that I confess that I'm in the dark on. Well, I'm enthralled. Uh, another good show, Art. All right, thank you. Well, I am too, David. Uh, but I continue to explore, and as I said earlier. A lot of people get angry about that. They say you shouldn't be exploring anything. It is all written in that book. And while I don't want to turn this into a religious show on this topic, it's impossible not to, to uh, right. uh, brush up against uh, religion. Right. And they get angry. They get frustrated. They, they say you're going in areas you shouldn't be going into. Mm-hmm. You should stay away from this for your own good. But uh, nevertheless, David, here we are. And we'll do more of it in a moment. Stay right there. Participate in the program. Call to 618 855 1 800 618 8255. First time calling, area code 702 727 Or the wildcard line at 702 727 1295. This is the CBC Radio Network. It is. Good evening. I'm Art Bell. My guest is David Scott, and we're talking about life after death. If there is one, kind of exploring uh, what it might be like and what it's really all about. And uh, it's one of the central questions I guess most humans uh, strive to answer. And we are going to get back to uh, uh, David in just a moment. And I've got to outside uh, the body and exactly what it is. North American trading sells gold. Expression. Uh, some people have the gift of being able to leave their body consciously. And, uh, and explore on their own uh, the temporal realms of existence, uh, going from place to place on Earth in, in, a, in, a, in the flicker of a thought. Well, are we, what realm are we in when we so travel? I mean, I've heard people talk about traveling in space, mm-hmm. uh, traveling uh, away from the Earth. Uh, Shirley MacLaine, others uh, have right. described that kind of travel. Right. Uh, when you... When you leave that your body in this life, you're still in this sphere of uh, spiritual existence. Uh, now, in the in the scriptures in the Bible, uh, uh, there are many instances where Paul discusses uh, leaving his body and being caught up to the third heaven and such like that. And that does happen too, where you are lifted out of your body by the Spirit of God and taken to a higher spiritual plane for whatever reason. Uh, when you leave your body here, as part of I, I'm under the impression in the belief, and I have the belief that you experience things on this level of existence still. So it's in this, in other words, it's confined to this, what we call this spiritual realm. Right. Uh, now, there is an interesting story of a, I'm trying to remember the book I read on it, um, about a man who <clears throat> learned how to leave his body and uh, explore different spiritual realms, but his uh, his uh, wanderings were limited to uh, just the first three or four spheres and nothing more. Is this, um, in your view, a dangerous thing to do, or is it a good idea? Well, I would kind of say that uh, exercise caution if this is a if this is a pursuit that you're uh, endeavoring to pursue. All right. Uh, let me go back to the phones. On the uh, toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Good evening. Where are you calling from? From Los Angeles. Hi, Art. Hello. Hi, David. Hi. Um, it's been a little time in this experience, and 
it seems like whoever created us put us in a realm of um, either having faith or living in fear or gradations thereof. Mm -hmm. And the other one was uh, truth or dishonesty or denial. Mm -hmm. And I think we're experiencing a uh, society today who lives very much in denial and dishonesty. And uh, we have to make some choices as to which direction we're going to go because uh, we have uh, some very bad problems on our hands. Now, I used to um, have my doubts, and, you know, I was talking about previous experiences. Well, St. Augustine, I guess, had some pretty bad experiences, and he came out of that life and changed it. But uh, one of the scripture writings that I kind of was confused about was uh, Christ said, not to pour new wine into old wine sacks, pour new wine into the new wine sacks, because the old ones before the fermentation process is over would crack and we'd lose it. Mm -hmm. And I often wonder, what the heck does this mean? Well, what the Lord is speaking of when he refers to that is that if you're going to receive new truth into your life, if you're going to uh, receive higher ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you yourself have to become a new vessel. You have to become purified in your own uh, existence as you are now. You have to re-alter the way that you think, the way that you look at life, the way that you happen to judge things in your life. And that's what you have to become a person to receive that new truth. If you were to try to understand much of what the Lord tried to teach us and remain at the level of spirituality that you're at now, you would not be able to understand nor contain the truth that the Lord is trying to give to you. So he says that you can't become, you can't pour new wine into old wine uh, skins lest they burst. He's referring to you being the wine skin. You have to become a new wine skin to receive the new truth that he's trying to teach you. More or less uh, saying uh, that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't resist. On the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Yes, sir. Mr. Scott, how are you doing tonight? That's fine, thank you. Jody in Albuquerque. Hi, Jody. Um, I've got two questions, and I hate to dwell on religion. Okay. But just exactly, who is Jesus? Was he an uh, insurrectionist? Was he a teacher, a philosopher, or was he really God? Also, uh, how exactly do you live your life to stay out of hell? Sounds like a scary place. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it does. Well, let me address uh, who, uh, who Jesus uh, was and is. Jesus um, came to this earth for a specific reason, and that is to show the way to all people who have ever lived on this earth, the way back to the Father, the way back to our Father in heaven. Not only did he have to endure every trial and every uh, temptation that we have endured, but he had to overcome them in such a way as to have never have uh, succumbed to those uh, temptations. So not only was he a man, but he was also the, uh, a perfect man who lived on this earth. His teachings have been only to point to the Father in a way of understanding what we need to do to get back to our Father. So he is the Savior of the world in, a, in that sense. When you say Savior, he is the only one by which you can reach the Father. All right. Okay. Uh, I want to return to these different uh, spheres of existence or levels uh, of spirit existence. Okay. What can you tell me about them? Do we know anything about them? In other words, what's where? You... Oh. Well, uh, we do know that uh, there are different levels of existence, the highest level being where our Father lives, yes. the lowest one being where... Uh, there is no light, that there is, uh, a, it's just a dark realm. Yes, but, well, I think most of us uh, imagine that we're going to fit into some something in between those two, and so that's where my curiosity is peaked. Mm -hmm. What kind of existence is a spirit, our spirit, going to have in one of these middle levels? What, what do we have to look forward to? Well, again, like I said earlier, it all depends on what you uh, to do with your life in this world. And if you choose to do what everything the, the Savior told you to do, to point out uh, the right path, mm -hmm. you'll end up in the higher realms. If you choose to follow after your own lust, your own uh, greed, your own desire for power at the expense of other people, you're going to find yourself in a dark realm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, okay. Again, I guess I should be more specific about what I'm asking, David. I'm not answering your question. No, you're not. Um, what I'm asking is actually what's there. Let's say we go to one of these middle realms. Okay. Uh, what's there? I got you now. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, what, what has been described in Heavenly Ways of Earth's Graduates, and again in uh, a wonderful accounting of this in uh, Life in the World and Scene, uh, is a pretty much a realm. Let's, let's, let's just take a, a realm in the middle spheres, okay? All right. Uh, that realm is pretty much described as one that is, has halls of learning. It is a realm of light. It's sort of like, let's say you uh, live in, uh, in this world here, but it's continual light. Everything is in uh, perfect order. There is no sadness. There is no uh, dis uh, despair. There's no depression. Uh, you're free to, to choose the path of, of learning that you want to learn. Hmm. The halls of learning are, fa uh, are fascinating to me. Uh, where uh, Betty Eady described them a little bit um, in her book. Uh, Daniel Brinkley, in his book, uh, uh, Saved by the Light, describes them a little bit. Uh, and what you find is, is that it's pretty much the same way here, only there's, there, it's, uh, it's perfection. It's continual uh, um, summertime. Does that a get close to answering your question? It sounds a little like you're going to a... Uh... A very warm, light library. <laughs> you're going. You're going to a, a realm of existence where everything is set in order, and you have all of eternity to progress. Uh, your your whole life is centered around your progression there to serve others as best you can, to learn uh, the higher ordinances, to reach higher spheres. Those are that's what the halls of learning are for. Is it uh, individualized, uh, David, do you think? Uh, look, I, I understand you may not be able to answer some of these questions, but, mm -hmm. you know, heaven for David Scott and heaven for Art Bell might be, if we were to try and describe them right now, very different sorts of things. Right. I'm not altogether uh, sure that I would be happy going to a place of light where I could learn. Uh, for me, heaven might be an entirely different concept. In fact, it is. And... So what do you say about that? I agree with that. Um, I agree that you're... This is the fascinating thing about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer that by posing a question in this way. Mm. What if your beliefs or your thoughts literally create what you receive in this life and the life after? What if that literally your thoughts create your heaven or your hell? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, we can play all kinds of what well, if games. I, I, I'm very interested in what actually is. Now, well, I, I, I understand you have no way of knowing that. Well, you see, the thing is, the point that I was just making there is that your thoughts, your beliefs, everything that you that is you is what will create, what will make up what you receive in the next life. Do you follow my meaning? Uh, yes. And, and that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Where, who you are, what you are, what you're comfortable with, what your com uh, what your thoughts are concerning life after death uh, will determine what you do in this life. Will, will determine what you endeavor to accomplish. So, in in effect, we are all busily uh, on this earth creating our own heaven or hell. That's correct. Yes. Ah. On the uh, toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi, where are you calling from, please? This is Fritz from Phoenix. Hi, Fritz. As man progresses in his evolution and grows up, it becomes now easier and easier to grasp the old question, David. Who am I? Where do I come from? And where do I go? David, it is shows like this that educates the public. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Art, you too. Thanks, Fritz, uh, and uh, have a have a good evening. Just a little praise there, David, on the yeah. wild card line. Uh, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Yeah, hi. Art, Bob in Vegas. I have a bad signal on 780, but at least I can barely get, get to you. Well, glad you're hearing it, Bob. And, uh, you know, I had a, a very strong experience when I was 12. I later found out I had the experience of the white light, which was really a spiritual experience. I had to go through finding, finding, finding later in life. Then I found through Guru Jeff and then through a thing called Subud. David, have you ever heard of Subud? S U B U D. Can you repeat your question, please? S U B U D. S U B U D. Subud. It's a 
Shushili Bodhidharma, a man from Indonesia, uh -huh. was a spontaneous spiritual uh, letting go or initiation. I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, Bob. I don't understand what you mean. I, I, yeah, I'm having trouble grasping what you're asking me. What are you asking, Bob? Well, I wanted to be the head of Subud because we we found Subud in England and brought it all over the all over the world. Okay, and apparently it's a simple the way of of letting people uh, experience the union with with life force or spirit. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we both don't know what you mean. Sorry, Bob. On the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi, Art. Hi. Um, I had a. This is Colin from Eugene. Eugene. Eleven twenty KPNW. Yes, sir. And I kind of had a point, I guess, to make about, um, well, this is what I was thinking about when the caller asked about the uh, past lives, about the population explosion. Yes. Um, I kind of think that uh, everyone that was ever around um, for all time is kind of coming back now. Or I think he said something about um, when they're coming to the second uh, Christ gets closer. Um, more people will be coming, and I kind of believe that that uh, everybody that was ever around um, is coming back to this plane now for whatever people talk about Armageddon or <clears throat> whatever you want to call it. Um, I kind of think maybe that might be an idea. All right. Uh, it's certainly a possibility. That, uh, that they're going to get everybody back in the pool for the big event? Yeah, it, it's certainly a possibility, uh, but that's, uh, again, out of my realm of understanding. Mm-hmm. All right, David, fair enough. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Yeah, Art, this is Bob in Everett, Washington. Hello, Bob. Uh, we have a problem up here. Oh? KVI is not carrying Dreamland. Oh, the, what are they doing? They have somebody else on. I see. You know what the story is? I have no idea. Well, I'm listening to you on, I think, 1120. Oh, uh, that'd be KPNW. Is that Spokane? Uh, no, 1120 would be KPNW Eugene, Oregon. Oh, it's coming in pretty good, but not. it's not like having you here with us. I understand. So there's life. There's no life after Art Bell <laughs> in KVI land tonight. Okay, well, these things occur from time to time. And I had a great time in Vegas. I'm glad. Okay, thank you. Right, bye-bye. And on the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Peter from Quincy, California. Hello, Peter. Um, got a couple of simple ones here. Hope, well, actually, not really simple. Since we are diving in and out of the Bible, I'm not real familiar with nitpicking out of the Bible, but I do know that there's one passage in the Bible that says that even those who do not find Christ will still be able to find the way. And I wonder how you can, how David can sit there and say that um, Christ is the only way. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about those of us, and this is where this comes out of, um, I was born a telepath, empath, high-level high psychic abilities, and I've always been that way. And most of the Christian religions have made me very leery of any religion, so I don't, I don't get in with any of them. I, I am walking my own path in the spiritual levels and stuff like that. No, that's, so. a, that's a very good question. Do those uh, who, in effect, walk their own path, right. can, can they find the correct path? Absolutely. You see, it, it's similar to having many tributaries and many streams flowing into a great river. For each individual that's on earth, there's a separate path one must walk to find the one true path. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, whether you have to find your way to Christ your own way, that's your, that's your uh, life. That's the way you need to travel. Uh, for someone to come to an individual and say, listen, either you believe the way I believe or you're going to hell, mm -hmm. is not of God. That is someone who uh, doesn't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, good enough. Uh, let's keep moving on the wild card line. You're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Robert. I'm calling from St. Louis. Okay, Robin, speak up good and loud. Uh, you're kind of hard to hear. All right. Uh, yes, this is uh, something that happened to uh, me and my brothers, uh, I guess, about 15 years ago, back when we were about 13 or 14 years old. I, I can barely hear you, my friend. All right, I'll try to speak up. Is that a little better? Yeah. All right, I said this is something that happened to uh, me and my brothers about uh, 15 years ago, back when we were about 13 years old. But uh, two separate instances of... Uh, my two younger brothers were sleeping in the same room together, and me and my older brother, we had a room together. And on both occasions, uh, 
something appeared in the room. Um, and like I said, only one of us in each room seen it. And the other one that was there sleeping, uh, more or less couldn't be woken up at the time. And the uh, two that did see it said that this thing was uh, as tall as the room, probably eight and a half feet tall. They said that it was uh, huge, muscular, that it was so much darker than uh, the regular, what you would consider, you know, dark, you know, at night, say two in the morning, that you could see it, you know, like, you know, plain as day. And, he, and both and my two brothers said that it was a, uh, you know, huge muscular, and it was, you know, pitch black, and the only thing on it that wasn't incredibly dark was the eyes. They said that the eyes were glowing red, you know, and it, you know, had a big black bald head. It didn't have any horns or anything like that. But uh, they both assumed, you know, obviously that it was some kind of demon. And that it stood there, you know, like the foot of the bed staring at him for probably an hour or two. And like Ooh. I said, I was in the room at, you know, in one instance. And I remember my brother pushing me, you know, to wake me up. And as soon as I woke up and went to, like, you know, roll over and look, it's like I fell out dead asleep. All right. Uh, thank you for that story. And, uh, David, what about these creatures? Now, I... <laughs> Uh, there's a whole area here we can explore, but offhand, uh, what he just described, what would you think he encountered? Well, there are people who come in, are coming into this earth right now who are uh, very powerful spiritual beings that the adversary truly would like to destroy. Uh, the work that they're, they came to do would be the direct opposite of the work that the adversary would want to have happen. And so it wouldn't surprise me a bit that... Uh, the adversary would destroy this uh, individual or in some way intimidate him, scare him, or in some way uh, cause him to fear. Because fear is the direct opposite of faith. It's the direct opposite of uh, power. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like a discussion we were having a little while ago about choices that you must make. And uh, faith is one, and uh, I guess fear is the result of not making the first choice. Uh, that's correct. <laughs> All right. On the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi, this is Darren from Santa Barbara and Diane from uh, Reamstown. Yes. Is your guest saying that you have to be Christ, a Christian, in order to uh, in order to go to heaven? Well, that's a good question. Is that what you're saying, David? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. There are many people, uh, thousands, if not millions, of people who have lived on this earth who have never known or accepted Christ as uh, their personal Savior. Now, I know that there's many fundamentalists out there who would disagree with me on this. Oh, yes. But you see, the thing is, our, is simply this. Our Father in Heaven loves all his children. Like an atheist or a theosophist? It doesn't matter. If that person lived his life to, in such a way on this earth as to uh, warrant uh, a certain kingdom or a certain inheritance in this life, he will receive that inheritance no matter what he believes. Now, let me uh, say this. There are certain ordinances and things like that that will only people who um, receive those ordinances will receive a, the highest kingdom or the highest sphere. But that's beyond the scope of this conversation right now. One other thing, I had a Ouija board, right? All right, uh, sir, I'm sorry. We're not going to have time for that. We did cover Ouija, but uh, David, we're right up at the top of the hour, so hang loose a few moments. We'll be back to you. Okay. This is CBC. to her with regard to any Greenland topic. And uh, she's got a documentary called A Strange Harvest uh, back in 1993 that is available for $35. And Glimpses of Other Realities, which is a tremendous book with very careful graphic documentation, which costs $45. If you would like to uh, correspond with her or order one of those books... You can uh, write to her, Linda Moulton Howe, H-O-W-E, Post Office Box 538, Huntingdon, that's H-U-N-T-I-N-G-D-O-N, Huntingdon Valley, Pennsylvania, zip code 19006. That's Linda Moulton Howe, Post Office Box 538, Huntingdon Valley, Pennsylvania, zip code 19006. Zero, zero, 006. Uh, let me talk for a second about fax machines. Because 
They are very much the center of the information superhighway that everybody keeps talking about. You'll hear me get faxes all the time. Many of them now are sent by the new Sanyo fax machine that we've been selling for, oh, I don't know, a couple of months, I guess it is. This is more than just a fax machine. It will send and receive faxes on the phone line you've got right now. You don't need to order a second line for it. Uh, it will uh, copy any material, a picture, a photograph, um, cartoons, newspaper articles, or typewritten pages. Uh, at the push of a button, you put them in, push a button, it copies them. So it's a combination, really, fax machine, copy machine. The copy mode, by the way, has got enlargement and reduction functions. It's got all the goodies on it you would expect and more. We uh, did, did as we always do with products. We went out and tried to find the best we could find. That's how we settled on Sanyo. If we find something better at, or at a better price, we will carry that and show Sanyo to the door. But right now, uh, if you want the best, this is what we adjudge it to be for the price. The price is three forty nine ninety five. So if you're ready to get into the age of facts, here's the machine to do it with, and Sea Crane is the company to supply it. If you'll call them at seven thirty in the morning, uh, they're in fairly short supply right now. Um, you can get one on the way, and they will, by the way, hand it to you for that price. That includes shipping and handling. The fax machine, the Sanyo, from the Sea Crane Company, 1-800-522-8863. That's 1-800-522-8863. The Sea Crane Company. Do you remember the time when you could take a penny to the corner grocery store and be able to buy a nice piece of candy or maybe even a postcard? Well, of course, today, the convenience stores keep a bowl of pennies on the counter with a sign that says, take one if you need one. Can the dollar be far behind? You really can't buy anything for a penny anymore. In fact, a dollar bill will only buy what a dime would just a few years ago. It's true. The only form of money that still buys everything it used to is gold. Over a hundred years ago, an ounce of gold traded for $20. And with it, you could buy a really nice new suit. Today, you can cash in an ounce of gold almost anywhere in the world, and nearly $400 is put in your pocket. It still buys a fine wool suit. Maybe that's why wise conservative people with well-thought-out financial plans are moving back to the money that has a 6,000-year success record gold. No other financial holding offers the safety, security, and privacy of genuine gold. My friends at North American Trading will be happy to show you how you can own gold in privacy and safety. It's simpler than you might think. Call 1-800-877-9799 today and ask for their free information. Investors have always turned to gold during times of inflation and economic uncertainty. Don't wait till it may be too late. Call one 800-877-9799. You don't have to be rich to own gold. Just smart. Back now to R.W. Whitfield. R.W. says civilizations have come and gone. There has been another one in which flying machines uh, or flight was attained. And, R.W., what I wanted to ask you was, uh, that may be so, and I don't rule out that possibility, but if that is so, where's any evidence of it? Any uh, evidence of prior flying machines other than the pyramids? You talked about those. Uh, there, it, but in a large technological civilization, surely even with 800 mile an hour winds and a polar shift, there would be some evidence. Uh, there is. Uh, let me clarify one thing, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Continue with your calls on Greenland with Art Bell. Call Art now, toll free at 1-800-618-8255. 1-800-618-TALK. First time callers, area code 702-727-1222. 702-727-1222. Or the wildcard line at area code 702 
727-1295. 727-1295 in the 702 area code. Now again, here's Art Bell. I'm Art Bell. This is Dreamland. We're discussing what may come next, what may lie beyond. And uh, as sort of a, a necessary part of that discussion, there is some religion without, uh, without apologies. It is there. It mixes. It's part of the mix. And um, so you will continue to hear that. Just smart. Back now to my guest, David Scott. And, David, one of the other things that we track carefully on this show is um, uh, UFOs, aliens, all that sort of thing. Uh, as with what you've been telling us, in that field, there's an awful lot of uh, evidence that something is here visiting. Mm -hmm. Something has been here. Something is on Earth and continues to visit Earth. Right. Um, somebody just sent me a fax which asks the following. Were aliens also created by God, or is man uh, God's own unique creation? Oh, no. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Father has created uh, worlds unnumbered. We can't even begin to count the number of worlds he's created. And there are other civilizations outside of this world that uh, that Father created. Now, Abraham had the, uh, was told of, uh, that there are other civilizations, but he was only given an accounting of this world because it was this world that only pertained to him and us. Uh, yes, there are advanced civilizations. Uh, what they're uh, com what they're composed of, or what their uh, purpose is, I don't know. All right. Uh, this is from Murray. Ask David. Though we may die and live again, what will happen to the Earth? Will the Earth live again? And what will the Earth become as it progresses through its own path to perfection? Does the Earth, in fact, go through a cycle uh, as man does? Oh, absolutely. Oh, Every, really? Yes, everything that the Father has created, he created spiritually first. Uh, everything that you can ever imagine has always been created spiritually first. The Earth it will, is in itself going through its own probation, probationary uh, existence. When it has finished uh, the, uh, with this particular existence, it will then become uh, cleansed and purified and become the home of all the uh, people who inherit the highest realm, this, in essence, will become uh, the highest realm for those spirits who inherit that at, at, at the final time. Let me see if I'm getting this right. Is, is, are you suggesting that matter mm -hmm. has its own spirituality? Yes, it does. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, that's that's something new, um, and then its own vibration, as does mm -hmm. uh, our soul. You said. That's correct. Uh, when, oh. you when you consider that uh, everything is composed of matter, including us, each particle of matter inherits automatically the light of Christ or the light of our Heavenly Father. But I always, I always thought there was a delta, a difference between biological matter, which mm -hmm. is a vessel for the soul, and uh, matter, matter, you know, the rock, mm -hmm. the death. Absolutely. I understand what you're asking. It is quite a stretch, I guess, for most people to believe that uh, matter such as a rock has a spirituality to it. But let me say this, it doesn't have a, the spirituality of uh, a sentient being like you and I, but that it is composed of spiritual matter. Does that make sense? Well, it, it does. Um, I'm, I'm, it may take me a while to grasp it, and I'm going to think about that. On, on the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hello there. Yes, hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, my question is, is you know, the free will and predestination. Uh -huh. I grew up believing in that also, but now the way technology is, we're learning that we're comprised of electrons and chemicals. Mm -hmm. And like an overabundance of testosterone can make us violent and aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so chemicals really can, I think we're going to find out in the years to come, the chemicals are sort of uh, pushing us towards our our own character, and if that's the case, for instance, like in another thing, the environment, like if someone was badly abused or uh, neglected as a child, mm -hmm. um, they're going to grow up in a certain manner and possibly tend to be abusive to others and may be violent. Right. So where is our free will in this? Okay, well, you, you still have your free will. But you 
I have to be very careful on how I address this question um, because it, when, uh, when you're speaking to someone who has been violently abused in their lives in some way or another and to place the expectation of uh, living their life in a normal manner as though they were raised in the perfect environment is unreasonable. On the other hand, though, that individual, uh, whoever they may be, uh, came into this world to learn a certain thing, and that thing may have been that uh, the only way they can learn it is by going through such an experience. And if they grasp the principle or grasp the understanding of their existence here on Earth, they can turn every negative into a positive in their life, and so they have a choice to make. You know, well, I they, still don't see where the choice is. You just got finished saying they've been they're brought into this world to learn a certain lesson. Yeah, I have the so same. Therefore, they're programmed. I have the same exact problem. On the one hand, you're saying uh, everything is predestined and they're going to have to learn this oh. lesson. Uh, no. That's the one hand. But the other hand, you're saying there's free choice and they don't have to do it that way. No, uh, there there is absolutely no predestination uh, at all. Um, you you have certain weaknesses, certain character uh, characteristics that you're inherently born with, certain things uh, that you need to learn and understand. Uh, those things may certain incidences in your life may be permitted to occur in order for you to have a greater understanding or learn a greater lesson. It's not like uh, you come to this earth and uh, it's already planned out every experience everything that's going to happen uh as though that uh it was uh set in motion and uh, that's astrology and well how about the chemical imbalance and so forth like they've mm -hmm. tested if you have a high dosage of testosterone uh -huh. you know that you do become violent and aggressive right. and you know if we're all comprised of chemicals and i don't believe we're all the same you know, you have varying degrees from from one spectrum to the other. That right. some people come into this world with violence already embedded in them. Oh, absolutely. And we're we're, we're and then where, where is their free choice? All right, where are you calling from, ma'am? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. All right, great. Um, so where is their free choice? They are chemically predestined. Well, we're 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 starting to get into a realm where I haven't the wisdom to address that question. <laughs> I, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, surely we cannot know it all, but it is yeah. it is a very good question, isn't it? it? It's a it's a great question. It's one that the individual who's experiencing that uh, has to find the answer for themselves. All right, David. On the first time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Thank you very much, Taz. David from Ogden, Utah. Yes. Our name, same state, just up the road away. <laughs> yes. Been reading an interesting book by another local author by the name of James L. Thompson. It's called Aliens and UFOs, Messengers or Deceivers, and you've touched on a couple of the issues uh, regarding UFOs and the relationship to the spiritual world. My personal opinion, um, I don't deny the fact that we may have visitors from other uh, other places in the universe visiting us. Um, but I think where you see a lot of the things with uh, abductions and some of the things interfering with free will, I think you may be seeing manifestations of uh, what you've been calling some of the <laughs> some of the darker realms, maybe. Could be. Um, I think uh, Paul mentioned Satan as the prince of the power of the air in the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. And uh, James Thompson in the book here talks about a uh, Dr. Frank Salisbury who wrote the Utah UFO display. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he talked about uh, an incident that happened back in 1967 in the eastern part of the state where a uh, fourth grade boy uh, announced to his family that a UFO was going to appear over the school the following day at a specific time. And when they asked him how he had found that out, uh, it was through a Ouija board they had been playing with. Mm. So uh, I'm curious, sir. Did it appear? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, I've had my own personal experiences uh, with death in the family and so forth, and I believe, uh, as as your guest does, that spirit uh, is matter. It's more finely, uh, more refined, but it can manipulate matter. Um, I've definitely seen that. Um, my father passed away, and we had some real strange things happen 
uh, afterwards. I was about 16 at the time. Uh, and just things that no one could explain as far as uh, physical things in the house breaking. And, and he did die unexpectedly at a rather young age. So those may have been some manifestations of some anger or, you know, some rage, like you say. All right. Um, anyway, um, thanks for your guest. It's been an interesting show tonight. Oh, yes, uh, indeed it has. Uh, thank you. And uh, while we can't answer all questions, we are here to explore, and we certainly are getting that done anyway. On the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Good evening. Yes, good evening, Art. This is Martin up in Anchorage. Hi, Martin, Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, real good uh, show. Uh, you're touching a lot of different subjects, and all of them I'm interested in. Uh, first off, uh, uh, we've talked a lot of times. Uh, I'm writing a book on UFOs. I'm a theologian. Oh, yes. I've uh, studied the Bible and other religions, and uh, so we have a lot in common. I also had uh, a near-death experience. I don't know if I've uh, described that to you, Art, but... You no, no you're not. Go, go, go right ahead if you'd like. Sure. Um... I uh, actually, uh, it was about 15 years ago, and I won't get into the details, but I actually, I was gone for uh, several minutes. My wife called the ambulance, and neighbors came, and I was out of my body looking down on them at the time, and uh, my, watched my body turn ghost white, and them frantically trying to revive me, and the ambulance pulled up in the front. I could hear the ambulance drivers talking as they came up the steps and uh, I was up uh, hovering uh, I would say about 10 feet above my uh, my body around the ceiling that was my vantage point to answer your question about why they didn't see the um, um, the light that the doctor put up the neon sign yes uh, I would say it was because you're not focused on material things like that art you're, you're, you've entered into a spiritual realm. That's a very good answer. Yeah, you, you're seeing a light that's so much brighter than any neon sign. It, that would be... And yet, though, sir, people have described the operating room, uh, yes, revival those efforts. Are things all, those are things all focused on what's happening, the people, and what's significant. I believe these thing, experiences happen for a reason. Uh, uh, the uh, divine creator... Is uh, uh, is doing all of this and wants us to to uh, um, be enlightened uh, as much as we're able to. Uh, you know these little experiments that we do to try to uh, break it down and figure it out intellectually are really insignificant, and he wants us to focus on the spiritual things. All right, that's, uh, that's, that's a very good answer, a very good answer, and uh, it's simply because. Do you accept that, David? Uh, as, as an answer, a reason why people not might not see a neon sign, it is simply insignificant and not relevant to what the person is experiencing? Well, I wish I had thought of it. <laughs> yeah, very, very good answer. On the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've gotten the wrong number. All right. Very good. Uh, on the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. You're on the air. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I've been listening to your program. I've listened a couple of times before, uh, but I'm not a regular listener. Uh, I think uh, earlier in the show you were talking about is the only way to um, find God or whatever is through Jesus Christ. I would like to uh, just say that my own, um, my I, I I found answers that satisfied me through the Edgar Cayce readings, which was that Jesus was the man and that Christ is the power. And the power can be reached through any, uh, through any belief, any faith, whether it be uh, Buddhism, uh, uh, Judaism, uh, Christianity, whatever. That's... Uh... Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Central Point. Central Point, Oregon. All right. Uh, KOPE. Yes, uh, David, the same... Uh, I guess that is, in a way, the way I feel. In other words, as you pointed out, there may be many paths, mm -hmm. and um, spirituality um, is, is, is a path, um, right. and it, it need not be as precisely described in the Bible, but I certainly have a belief in a, in a larger being, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I guess I'm satisfied in my own mind 
and comfortable with my belief, and hopefully that'll get me where I want to go. <laughs> well, it will eventually get you to where you want to go, uh, as, as your, your caller stated. Uh, there are many, many paths to the one straight and narrow path that's referred to. And each individual is uh, traveling their own path to enlightenment and understanding. And they're the only ones that could uh, uh, find that path for themselves. So those of us who keep our own counsel uh, with regard to our spirituality are not necessarily going down the wrong path, only a different road to the eventual same destination. Is that about right? That's correct. Or to, or to the eventual same conclusion. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. All right, good. On the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi, David. Hi, Art. Hi. Um, I had a problem with uh, some of the things that David was saying about father, always associating with father. I know that's a very Christian concept, in terms of certain theologies, but there is a concept of mother as being sacred. Oh, yes, and you're absolutely correct. Um, or God without gender association. In fact, higher creative forces really are beyond gender identification. Well, I don't agree with that. Uh, but you see, that's the wonderful thing. I don't, I don't have to be right. I'm just interested in the truth. And uh, that doesn't make me wrong. I feel that right. there is gender and there is that which is beyond gender. Right. When you deal with those forces that create universes, galaxies, dimensions, and the infinitesimally small beings that exist on this planet and many planets and the larger beings as well. Mm -hmm. It's an enormous project. I think uh, dividing it by gender and alienating and identifying only with one gender mm -hmm. Well, you see, <laughs> limited. Well, I, 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 I fully understand and appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I think, though, that it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, that's what I was going to say, too. Why does it matter? Yeah. Uh, father is just a, a term that you're using. Does I'm referring to my, my God yes. as my father. Yes. And uh, somehow or another, uh, if this entity is what we all think it's cracked up to be, she wouldn't mind. Absolutely. And, you, I, and you're going to discover that things that you once believed aren't true and things that you believed were true or not. Uh, you're going to come to the... You're going to understand. You're going to know everything eventually. And it doesn't matter if you know it all at one time. All right. On the first time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Good evening. Yes, um... I'm Paul, calling from Salt Lake City. Hello, Paul. Yes, I was just uh, wondering, um, David, are you getting any of your um, ideas from Mormon theology? Uh, yes, I get a lot of my ideas from Mormon theology, but I also get a lot of my ideas from uh, studying uh, the works of uh, uh, Nietzsche, and uh, I've read the works. Or some of the work and teaching for Buddha. I've read the Quran. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, if have you identified yourself as a Mormon on well, this uh, broadcast? I just tuned in. So no, no, you hasn't, but uh, it you're, it doesn't, it you're, doesn't, you're welcome to if you would like to. Are you Mormon, Dave? I am Mormon, Okay. but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Uh, it, the, the, the point being is, is that what I'm telling you now uh, is hopefully for the purpose of furthering and enlightening the individual person. I'm not here to push any particular religion I understand. or dogma because the spiritual experience goes beyond religion. How, how though, uh, as a matter of curiosity, do you think the Mormon church would react to what you're saying? <laughs> uh, that, that answers it very well, David. Stand by. We're at the bottom of the hour, and we'll be right back. <laughs> You're listening to Dreamland on the CBC Radio Network. We're talking about what may or may not come after. Uh, David Scott says he thinks he knows, and he's been telling us about it, and will continue that process. I'm Art Bell. Stay right where you are. Radio Network. It is. I'm Art Bell, and uh, this is Dreamland. And I'm about to read a fax in a moment. I can do that because I have a fax machine that follows, right? And that number is one 800 522 which follows up on something I said earlier, uh, David. 
Um, all right, I'll be trying to get through on the wild card line, but in the event I can't, I'd like to give you some specifics on the experiment you alluded to with regard to weight loss at the time of death. Although I remain pragmatic and skeptical on the subject, I continue to keep an open mind for my own insight. It is interesting that you uh, referenced unexplained weight loss, as I'm quite familiar with the specifics of this alleged phenomenon. The experiment reportedly was conducted at Massachusetts General Hospital sometime in the 30s or 40s. I'm unable to recall exactly. Nevertheless, the procedure was reported, I believe, in a book called The Third Eye. A terminally ill patient was placed on a balanced beam scale which weighed the bed, mattress, clothing, and bed liner against an opposing weight that kept the assembly in perfect balance throughout the dying process. In this manner, any fluid losses and or weight of expelled air could be accounted for at the moment of clinical death. At that precise time, the actual weight loss was calculated at three quarters of an ounce. In 1960, I called Massachusetts General. They would neither confirm nor deny the report. Additionally, there have been numerous reports by nurses who reportedly have observed the appearance of some sort of astral body leaving the physical one at the time of death. That's the facts. And, uh, uh, David, uh, is that familiar to you? Yes, that's, that's the experiment I was uh, aware of. Fascinating. Three quarters of an ounce, a non-trivial amount of weight. Well, yeah, that, that's significant, uh, which can't be accounted for, in, uh, in my opinion, in any other way. Uh, would you like to see experiments of the same sort uh, repeated if it could be done in this modern day? Uh, well, you know, Art, I, I look at that, and I, it would be wonderful if you could actually prove uh, through scientific method the existence of a spirit. But it, would, it wouldn't really matter anyway, because people are going to believe what they want to believe. Well, that's true. Uh, back to the phones. A lot of people want to talk to you. Toll-free line. You're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Where are you calling from, please? Hello. This is Todd from Seattle. Hi, Todd. Hi. I wasn't sure if I was uh, getting on line. I think they bumped you back an hour in Seattle for, for the president's speech. Uh, I, oh, I see. Yes, um, I guess that's what's happened in Seattle. He went on the air, I believe, at about 6.30 or so. Oh, okay. Well, I um. Anyway, so I may I might be an hour late <laughs> in what I'm calling about. That's quite all right, my friend. I was calling about um, your your understanding that um, all religions were leading to the same path, and um, I was just calling to say that if you can believe that if you want, but then you have to strip out biblical Christianity from that because it's inconsistent with all the other has being equal to it. it it's yeah. true. It's true. It does argue with it. It says it just isn't so, uh, doesn't it? And, David, how do you deal with that? Well, not all paths are equal, and that isn't what I said. They all lead to a, a specific uh -huh. path, uh, or they can lead to a specific path. Uh, there's only only one way, uh, I think the specific scripture says, is uh, straight, uh, narrow is the gate and straight is the way, something of that nature uh, that leads them to uh, eternal life. And uh, if you're not on the right path, in my opinion, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. However, does that mean everyone who happens to believe in a Buddha or uh, another sort of God, are they going to go to hell because they don't happen to believe in Jesus Christ? I well, mean, the, the, the fact, what, we're, what I believe we're judged on is that what which, which we know if they've been told of the gospel and they refuse jesus christ and believe in the other to and exclude jesus christ then yes they will if they've heard well, the truth and denied it but this but jesus but, says no one gets to the father but through me and if they yeah. and if they have if they haven't heard that i don't know what the answer is well they'll go to hell or not right, what, what you're you. what you're saying is is that if, if a missionary went to china and taught people the gospel of jesus christ and they refuse to believe that and cling, cling to their own belief system at that moment, then they've had their chance. Right. I come from the perspective that it has, they have to have a testimony that what they're being taught is true to receive that sort of condemnation. If they receive the testimony of the Holy Spirit, 
that the gospel of Jesus Christ is true, then they have no uh, argument against uh, having been taught the gospel. And on the other hand, if they re don't receive the testimony of the Spirit, I don't see how they can be held accountable for something that they truly didn't believe was true. All right. On the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Yes. This question is for Mr. Scott. All right. Okay. Mr. Scott, uh, the uh, spiritual planes of realms that you're referring to, uh, do you think of them as the same as parallel dimensions? Uh, no. Well, yeah, that's a good question because uh, they do exist uh, on different vibrational levels or in different dimensions. Uh, do you get... Yeah. Do you get uh, uh, Circles within circles on this. Um, I'm so, trying to define your concept. Okay. Uh, imagine the Earth. Right. Okay. Now imagine uh, uh, concentric circles around yeah. the Earth. That's what I thought. The concentric circles. All right. Right. Uh, one one above the other. All right, ma'am. Where are you? Uh, this is Alaska. Alaska. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you. And so then. Concentric circles, uh, different levels of spiritual existence that go outward from Earth? That's correct. The lowest ones being near the Earth, the highest uh, spheres being further from the Earth. All right. On the first-time caller line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Oh, hi, Art. Yeah, this is Lee in Fresno. Fresno, and, uh, yes. Yeah, listen, uh, David, I, I hate to tell you, but, you know, Jesus said that... Uh, that he is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. Uh, yes, uh, he's confirmed that, uh, caller. I, I'm listening to this program, too, and I've heard him confirm that a number of ways. He simply said that people on other paths will come to the same, uh, uh, the same point uh, e eventually, or that they can come to the same point eventually through uh, a different path. Well, hopefully they'll be still living when that happens, though. Well, that's not altogether um, certain. Uh, an individual, well, it, an individual will have the opportunity to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. If he doesn't, after all, when Christ did die uh, on the cross, he did go to the spirit world and taught his gospel there. And so those spirits who lived with Christ lived on the earth never had the opportunity in this life to receive the gospel. And so he not only organized his gospel here on this earth, he also organized it in the spirit world, which tells me that if you don't have the opportunity here, you will have the opportunity there. Well, you know, I, as for myself, and I believe that most other Christians, though, I think that we're just going to take the uh, safe way and believe it now. Well, that's fine. Uh, nobody has said that uh, you should not, sir, and whatever you're comfortable with is a fine path uh, to be on, and if you're on the straight and narrow, uh, that described in the Bible, I don't think anybody, certainly David, has no problem with that, do you, David? No, absolutely not. Yeah, this is the place to do it. <laughs> this is the place to perfect yourself. It's a lot easier here than it is in the spirit world, I'll tell you. All right. On the uh, toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi. My name is Deanna, and I'm calling from Truckee, California. Hi there. Hi there. I want to share with you my experience of when my mother passed away. Please. And she was very ill for about 11 months. She was dying of cancer. She was in the hospital the last few months, and she was in a coma. And the day of her death, all the family was around. I was to the side of her bed holding her hand, and I started to say a prayer to myself, which I didn't normally do, and as I was, I looked up through the ceiling, and I saw my grandmother that had passed away the year before she had, and a man, but I have no idea who he was, and as my grandmother and this man came through the ceiling, my grandmother said to my mother, Come on, Allie, we have to go. That was her name, my mother. Right. And my mother said, oh, she didn't respond at that time. And I'm talking about telepathically, I guess. Because my grandmother again said, come on, Allie, we have to go. You think that was telepathic communication? I, oh, spirit. But then I heard my mother say, I'm hurrying as fast as I can. Hmm. Not only did I see my grandmother and whoever this other man was, but I also saw my mother's spirit come from the toes through her body up through and left through 
I guess what you call the third eye, and the three went off into the ceiling. Boy, uh, that must have been very comforting for you. It was wonderful. And I, I, I would also imagine, ma'am, I'm sorry, David, that it must have changed your life ever since. It has. It has tremendously. All right. Thank you but, very much. You know, Art, that's a fascinating story, and there's, and there's thousands, if not millions of people all over the world who have had these kind of experiences. At the end of the program, if it's okay, I'd like to give out uh, an address for people with these kind of stories to contact me with, because I would love to hear hear from them. Uh, you're more than welcome to, David. I, I think uh, I think that this is very much like the UFO business that we follow. Uh -huh. You get story after story after story to the point that it's just impossible to deny that it may be so, uh, David. And uh, maybe we're just hearing things that we want to hear. I don't know. But there are so many stories so specific, like that lady that was just on, that sounds so real that I don't think it can be denied. Right. I, I, it, 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 to me, it, it's just a reaffirmation of what I've already believed for hmm. many years. Well, that's what I say when I say we may be just... Uh, a sort of uh, stoking up our own beliefs here, but um, but I think I really think there is something to it. That's why I do this program, David. I think it's an important interchange. On the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. How you doing? Okay. Where are you, sir? Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, yes, sir. Uh, I just want to give you. I'm a born again Christian, so I get a little perspective. Um, the one thing I wanted, to, I just want to make a couple quick points. One, Hebrews 9:27 says it. It says that it's committed to men once to die, then to judgment. So you can only accept Christ here on this earth. And after you die, your fate is determined. And, and once you die, the Bible says that either your spirit goes into eternal Hades or eternal waiting place for the final judgment, or it goes to be with the Lord in heaven. But, but as far as you're concerned, no negotiating in the spirit world, huh? No, because Hebrews 9.27 says, once to die, then the judgment, I've and got then you. your spirit waits for judgment in either heaven or hell. All right, thank you. Uh, well, there you are, David. Uh, here it is again. Somebody saying, look, uh, you're not going to um, uh, do any negotiating, or you're not going to uh, be able to modify or change your behavior. Once you leave this earth, everything then is already determined. Well, uh, of course, I, I said it many times earlier that uh, I don't. I know that that's not so. Uh, I, I, I think many times people interpret the scriptures to a way uh, that they want it to mean, and uh, it discounts a loving and uh, a gracious heavenly Father or Mother, for that matter. Uh, Father loves all his children, and he wants all his children to return back to him. And he will provide them every opportunity to do so, and however long it may take. Even in the spirit world? Even in the spirit world. All right, on the wild card line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Mr. Scott, Hi. Um, you know, like the manipulation of vibration is like the quintessence of musicianship. So do you think that maybe this could lead to a heightened, like an acute ability to hear things in the spiritual and physical realm that others can't? Absolutely. Put, an, put another way, are musicians closer to God? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a musician, so obviously that's true. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, the, here's, here's the thing. Uh, musicians, uh, I, I don't know if occupation or, or uh, artistic talent make any difference. But I do know that an individual who has the ability to raise the vibrational level will hear and see things that normal people or people on a lower uh, vibrational level cannot. Yeah. Well, um, do you have a favorite pre-20th century composer? A pre-20th century composer? Well, like before the turn of the century? I love Debussy. Oh, that is so cool. And can I ask you... um? If you had any comments on the infinite nature of the Overtone series, I'd be glad to hear them. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's something I never studied for except for this program tonight. <laughs> 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 Listen, uh, all right, well, while we're on the topic, um, uh, or still near the topic of near-death experiences, you said you would like to hear from some people that have had them. Yes, I would. Uh, how would they contact you, David? They can contact me at a P.O. Box 10, 
Provo, Utah, 84603. Or they can call our book line number at 1-800-846-2233. Um, I'm sorry, what were the last four? 846-2233. And that's what they'd like to order in is the two books I was talking about, uh, Life in the World Unseen and uh, Heavenly Ways of Earth's Graduates. And that uh, is your book, Heavenly Ways of uh, Earth? My, the book that I've written is called The Way of the Ultimate Warrior. The Way of the Ultimate Warrior. That's correct. All right. On the toll-free line, you're on the air with David Scott. Hi. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, turn your radio off for us, please. Uh, and uh, tell us where you're calling from. Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to... I, I'm, I've been comforted by some of the things that have been said tonight because I'm a Baptist preacher's daughter, hmm. quote-unquote, born again. But I've been through hell, through trying to live by the, the Bible word for word, literally, literally uh, because that's what I was taught to do. And finally, I just took leave of the whole thing and decided that that I have really have no control over what I believe, truly believe. And that's... I, I, I just can't accept all that I was taught um, and, and as a result, I don't know exactly what I do believe. All I know is I believe that there is another being, and I'm doing the very best I can. I feel very much in tune. I feel like I'm, I'm on the right way. Uh, I, I can't condemn other believers of who are on these other paths for believing what they believe. And then the gender thing, that is so silly, because God is a spirit, and what in the world does he need to be a, a man or a woman for anyway? I quite agree. And so the casual use of the phrase father or mother or whatever is, what, what is the difference? Yeah. Uh, what difference does it make? I'm a creator, or uh, I understand some of the, um, the Orthodox Jews refer to the master of the universe. I like that. Or the great I am. Yeah. Um... You know, it, it's interesting that uh, some of the things that you were saying, every man or woman on this planet can know the truth for themselves, and I would highly encourage them to uh, seek the truth on their own and to never, ever accept one man or woman's uh, uh, word for it. You can go to your father or mother or the great I am and find the truth for yourself. The Spirit of the Lord will reveal to you anything that you want to know. Well, I, I, I found myself standing on the on the beach in California once and writing in the sand, I am. Mm -hmm. And then just, yes, I am. And I was referring to my own existence, and then I looked at it and I thought, oh, my God, what have I written? There's a great significance to that, which we can't uh, cover on this program.